Well, hello everybody, and greetings, greetings. Welcome to another fun-filled excitement uh, or exciting episode of Tim Time. So today, Chris from Florida brought his Prius up. He has a 2009 Prius, and the dash keeps going on. Now I've seen a ton of videos on YouTube and articles where they blame this capacitor right here as the culprit. It's a uh, 100 microfarad at 16 volts. Whether this is true or not, I don't know. So anyhow, Chris had pulled it out, his dash apart, and uh, there's a really good video on there. I can't remember who does it. Uh, I'll probably be able to get that to you by the end of this. That uh, guy shows you how to take the video or the dash apart, and he does a really good job of it, and uh, he makes it look pretty easy, and, and ours was almost exact. But anyhow, so what I'm gonna do is uh, take this. Um, He's called uh, Boulder Hybrids. Yeah, Boulder Hybrids is the fellow's name. If you do a search on that and watch him take the uh, dash out, the dash. Yeah, he does a real good job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this capacitor off. And we're gonna check it. Uh, the people that have done this recommend going with around a 200, 220 microfarad, a 16 volt. So what the heck? We're gonna try it and just see what what we get out of it. So give me a few minutes to get that cap off, and we'll go from there. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm trying to keep my head out of the photo here and see if I can pop this cap off somewhat easily. There it is. There we go. So now I'll just clean the pads off. Oops. Okay, we're checking the capacitance in the ESR, the 100 ohm capacitor there. 100, yeah, 100 microfarad capacitor. And here it's saying it's, yeah, it was somewhere close to 40, now it's 38, 38 microfarad. So it's, for some reason, it's definitely dropping down in capacitance. But the ESR, I've seen it, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of seven, and now it's saying eight ohms of ESR. So that's the equivalent series resistance. So it's pretty high. I know for this, it should be under one ohm, somewhere in that neighborhood. So, I don't know what the story is with this this capacitor, whether it's starting to short internally. Uh, I guess we could actually just throw the ohm meter on it and see what that what that yields. But uh, it definitely looks like it's out of spec. So I'm going to throw an ohm meter on it and just see what I get. And then after that, we're going to put a uh, 220 microfarad. It's not a service mod, but it's a small one. I think it's 16 or 20 volts. Okay, I've got the fluke ohm meter, and I just want to see what happens when I check across the terminal here. 4.8 meg. Three point five meg. It's possible. So that's really not that bad with with what I was thinking. But I'm gonna check a uh, the one I'm going to replace it with and we'll get a look at that. Okay, so now I have uh, a Nichicon 220 at 16 volts, and Nichicons are pretty good caps, so hopefully. Let's put that in there, and where is my other lead? Oh, here's the other lead. Let's just see what we get on this now. So again, around 0.4, 0.8 megs, so that, that's what I mean. It wasn't that much different. Now I want to take a look at it on the... Uh, capacitance and ESR and see what we get this time. Okay, so this one's saying the equivalent series resistance is under 0.65. That's about what I would expect to see. The capacitance is 213 microfarads and like I said this was a 220. So the other one was acting more like a resistor than a capacitor, apparently, uh, which could have led to Chris's problems. His problems were the intermittent dash lights would go off. So what I want to do is get this cap ready to go in, and I'll put this in, and there's enough room for it to not be a surface mount. So we'll take care of that and be back with you shortly. Okay, go. Okay, so as you can see, what I did with the cap was bent the leads over at a right angle and uh, cut them off a little, just a little bit beyond the capacitor and they line up pretty well with the pads on that. So what I want to do is tin these leads a little bit. And 
other one. Come on. Okay, get off my finger. So now I gotta get it lined up with this this here guy. And if I remember correctly, the uh, the ground side was the side closest to me or furthest from the display. So let me just kind of get that lined up a little bit. I'm gonna bend these down so a little bit so that. They're touching. Make sure I get both paths lined up. Just heat this up again. I actually need a little bit of light on the subject. That's the problem. I should be doing it under the microscope. But Side's done nice and good. Let me just come back to the ground side. This is the side that needs a little bit more heat. Now I got to get real close up to it, so hang on. This this won't be very good, very good video. I, I got to be able to see here. Okay, say that again. So they kind of did the same thing with this one over here. It looks like this was intended to maybe be a a surface mount, and I decided to make it a through hole. But uh, anyhow, we'll see how it how it works out. Everything's good and tight on that, and. We'll have to remember to take some super glue down with us because Chris went crazy on the dash like an animal. Yeah, we cracked the dash a couple times. Okay. Okay, so here we are back in the vehicle. We got the dash back in with the circuit board back in and we're going to push the button. It should come on now. And there it is. So it's working. So to refresh, we replaced the 100 microfarad 16 volt capacitor in the circuit board with a 220 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. And it's working. Dash is back on. So thanks for watching. All right, well, so that wraps up another exciting adventure on uh, Tim Time's projects. And uh, thanks to Chris for the camera work and doing the finish up stuff there. So hopefully there's something here you can use. And, and that's not really me talking. That's a dog. Uh, hey, so one last thing. When you're done with this, make sure everything works. Take it for a test drive and make sure everything's good to go when you're done. One other thing I want to note is uh, if you're going to use a capacitor that's not a surface mount type, and it stands up, make sure you put some RTV or even some uh, hot glue underneath it to keep the vibrations down because really the only thing holding it on there then is the uh, the leads soldered to the board. So uh, so far so good, it's worked a couple days, no issues, we'll uh, keep reporting on it. Again, thanks for watching, take care.